It's been great to see everybody. It's been a while. Um, last time I saw you, my wife was pregnant, and now she's she's not because we had a baby. <laughs> what is so, for? Uh, January second. Uh, yeah. This year, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, when I like came by to the the service, I was like running from the hospital. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's been almost two months already. So, yeah. So, and same with you know you guys. You guys have gone through a big change, and you know, with, you know Pastor Jim is amazing. You know, we loved him. So, um, you know, I just want to say, um, for me, right, I'm here because of Pastor Jim. Uh, I'm up here, right, and he's the one who, when I first started nine years ago, um, this is nothing to do with my message, by the way, but I just want to say it now that it's on my mind and on my heart. Um, but when um, some of you may remember, some of you may not, some of you may not even know when I first spoke here, but uh, my dad had a massive heart attack, he went blind, um, and then he was giving a testimony of just like what going through all that was, and I gave the testimony of watching a loved one go through it. And so we had done that a couple of times in some churches, and Pastor Jim just literally afterwards like, you want to come back anytime, because he knew it was on my heart to speak and want to, you know, kind of move into ministry and in the pastoral role, and he was just like, you know, come, like, you know, and he gave me those opportunities, and he continued to let me speak here, and, um, you know, and it's kind of what helped develop me and helped me to be able to get other speaking opportunities and other things, so uh, I'm forever grateful for that, um, like, super grateful for it like that's why anytime like if i can and i'm asked to help come here if i can i'm willing because it's like you know everything that was done for me to help me uh if i were to get on my feet for lack of however you want to word that uh you know but whatever get my feet wet i don't know but um so i just want to make sure i say that because that's Jim. you know it was awesome so. it was always about mentoring yeah. yeah so it was cool and you, you know call me and talk to me and sometimes afterwards just give me little tips and hints and tricks and so it was fun so it was cool but yeah I just wanted to just wanted to throw that out there since this is my first time here since everything happened so yeah um, before we dive in then let's pray um, God I just want to thank you so much uh, for who you are and um, just Thank you again for, for Pastor Jim, just everything he did for all of us. Uh, but personally to me, God, I just I know what he did for me, and I'm just so appreciative and so thankful and so grateful. Uh, thankful for this congregation. Um, God, I just uh, pray that as we uh, move through your word today, God, your spirit um, speaks to us, uh, to our hearts and minds, and myself included. Um, and I just pray that um, we feel you and um, whatever you're trying to tell us, God, uh, as each individual is corporately whatever, uh, that we hear it, that our distractions are put away right now, uh, and we're attentive to what you have to say. And that's all that, in the name of Jesus, and according to your will, Lord. Amen. All right, so, is this how people usually do it? Where we, uh, I think I'm so used to sitting, so I'm like, whatever works. Um, well, all right, yeah, let's do that. All right, like stands here? No. Wherever you, Where you want. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever I want. I'm just going to be like right over there. <laughs> you want to Find the There's comfort zone as long as it's not. Yeah. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. Just get out of the way of the camera. All right. Um, so today I want to talk about um, shame. So that's kind of why I made that joke about feeling shame that I uh, well, didn't have a PowerPoint. I was joking. If anyone, if anyone I know some of you guys are friend, friends with me on social media. If you watched, I have videos of me falling like five different times in the ice. Oh, no. um, it's pretty funny, but you know, I'm not feeling any shame. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, but it's, yeah, it's pretty funny. So if you need to laugh, go look at them. They're on my wife or my page, so I thought I'd throw that out there. But anyways, okay. <laughs> we all need to laugh sometimes. All right, so. Today, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be. I'm just gonna do that. Is this, is this awkward looking? Is this okay? No, no, no. Let's do that. Let's yeah, do that. I'm so sorry. Oh no, do you want? There's one behind the speaker there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I feel like my neck is like. There we go. All right, that's cool. All right, sorry about that. It's funny because when I first started speaking, I was always standing, and then we got the stool. I got so used to it. No, that's what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna... All right, cool. See, and I'm I'm not feeling any shame right now. It's all right. Okay, so. Your family. Yeah. In all seriousness, um, we're gonna talk about shame. We're gonna talk about um, how I'm gonna define shame for the talk because shame can come in, uh, can mean many things to many people and how they what they mean when they say it. So it's really important that we will define what I mean by it for this specific talk. Um, but first, I want to talk about some other working definitions. The first one is this idea of convictions. So not necessarily conviction, but convictions. Like when someone has convictions, right? That's what you, or what we believe, are know to be wrong or immoral by some standard, right? And, and it's the Christian standard, it's God's standard. Um, right, so it's the knowledge of what sin is, right? That's your convictions, like, right? When someone has a conviction to not do something, right? Um, it's, that, it's that standard. Um, and again, for us as Christians, that would be God's standard. And then there's this concept of being convicted, uh, which for me, I look at that as the prompting by the Holy Spirit. Uh, when we go against the conviction, so essentially when we sin, right, you, you get that, you feel convicted by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And then there's conviction, right? Conviction is that indescribable feeling uh, we get after we're convicted, right? So you have your convictions, you sin, you're convicted, and you have this feeling of conviction. Um, and that's after you've been, um, again, convicted. And it's where we agree that we made a sinful choice, right? It's that idea that you understand and recognize what I did was wrong. Um, so it's the acknowledgement that you've sinned. <clears throat> and this is important when we talk about shame, because sometimes people will use the word shame to mean something like conviction or something like that. Like, they'll say, you shouldn't feel shame, but what they're really saying is, you shouldn't feel conviction. Like, it's almost like too much to their side of basically, like, just do what you want. You shouldn't feel bad about it. It's like, let's not get those murky waters, right? So, I wanted to make sure we understood what conviction, um, convicted, convictions all mean. So, shame. Again, shame can mean many things to many people. and can describe many situations, many feelings. So, there is the shame that you, uh, that you could bring on a person or people, right? Someone says, like, you bring shame on this family. I'm not referring to that in this talk. So whenever I refer to shame, I'm not referring to that. So anything I say, I don't want it to be misapplied. Um, that is obviously a definition of shame, but I'm, I'm not using that for this talk. There is the shame when something happens to you. Think of like a victim of sexual assault, right? They feel shame, even though they did nothing wrong, right? Something happened to them, they feel shame. I am not talking about that in this talk. I just need to make these things clear so when people hear me talking about things, they're not like, wow, that's insensitive. I can't believe, we're not talking about those things. We're talking about a very specific part of shame, and I just want to make that crystal clear. Then there's the shame, um, which is what we're focusing on, and it's the part of shame that is personal in terms of it's resulting from your, something you've done wrong, you know you've done wrong, that kind of shame. Um, it's painful, it's that feeling of humiliation, embarrassment, right? And all those, those still apply to the other aspects of shame that I'm talking about. Um, so, but it's just, this is continuing in this own personal thing. And it's after you've done something wrong. So you feel that because you have an awareness or consciousness of the actions being foolish by some standard, and again, in this case, God's standard, right? So, key word that I just said, I said you get after you have done something wrong, right? I'm not talking about shame in a situation where you've done nothing wrong and you just feel shame. That wouldn't, you know, because that's a different talk, right? So, right, because this idea of, right, when someone says, you bring shame to this family, um, right, that's an identity thing, right? You, you not listing those people and not worrying about what they have to say. When you feel shame of, like, you're a, a victim of sexual assault, right, that's, that's an issue of healing and an issue of, like, again, identity and, and that. That's a separate issue. We're not talking about that today. When you have a feeling of shame, from doing something that wasn't even wrong, you know, like me falling as a joke, but like, that's, that's reality, you know? Some people might feel like, oh, I feel like shame from that, like I feel it's, it's there, and people see it and look stupid, and it's like, but again, I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about shame in this specific context of this talk will be the shame you feel when, you, when you've done something wrong because you know it's wrong, okay? I wanna make sure it's crystal clear as we move forward um, for the sake of understanding the context. Um, so and again, some misuse the word shame interchangeably and incorrectly to mean conviction. So you know they might mean well and say like, oh, you should never feel shame, and 
in their mind, when they're defining it, they're defining it as this all-encompassing feeling, and like, it's not necessarily true. We should not feel shame. Shame. I want to make that crystal clear. But I want to make sure we understand the difference between shame and conviction. Those are very different. So, <clears throat> when does this type of shame come into play? To understand this, again, we need to really understand conviction. And again, to remind you, conviction is the knowledge that we have sinned. Right? So, when you have a conviction, not a conviction of like, oh, I have a conviction, I shouldn't do this. But when you... Um, Right, there's convictions, convicted, and conviction. That feeling of conviction is what I'm referring to. It's that knowledge that you've sinned. Like you, you feel it, right? You're like, you know you've done something wrong because you went against your convictions, right? You've done something that you said you wouldn't do or you know that God doesn't want you to do, and you feel it. That's You feel that. Um, and so when you break those convictions via sin, right, you are convicted by the Holy Spirit. Now, I do also want to mention, obviously because it's the Holy Spirit, it's very possible to be convicted without actually having the knowledge of sin. You know what I mean? Like the Holy Spirit can, can work in someone, right? You could do something wrong and not even know it's wrong and still feel that conviction or, you know, still feel convicted by the Spirit, right? So obviously that still applies. But I'm talking specifically about when we are aware of what we're doing. So think of when someone's convicted for a crime, right? They break the law. They're convicted by a judge or jury. Um, and then it's the same with God, right? We quote-unquote break the law of God and thus we're convicted by the Holy Spirit. Now, obviously, Jesus, right, paid for all that. So even if even if we feel that and, you know, whatever, we don't actually, like, pay that price, so to speak, right? Jesus paid that. Um, so, uh, again, the feeling of conviction differs from your convictions. Does everyone, I'm, I'm trying to kind of re-say them a couple times, hopefully getting, is everyone understanding that? Okay. Um, I'm seeing some heads, head, head, head nods, so hopefully we're good. Um, so, so let's talk about shame. Um, if you feel shame after something, so we're not talking about um, conviction, we're talking about the feeling of shame that someone feels, the one that we shouldn't have, um, you end up walking in guilt and condemnation, right? And you walk with maybe your head down, you walk towards deprivation, right? Like you. It's just not a good thing. When you feel shame, like you just you walk, you walk head down. You you wanna you wanna be hidden and closed off, uh, right? You feel unashamed. You feel uh, ashamed. You feel unworthy of forgiveness, right? These are all the things that shame brings. And again, this is not what we want. Um, you lose some of your self-respect. Um, sins can either be end up being ignored or end up being dealt uh, dealt with improperly when you feel shame. Uh, decisions tend to be more erratic when you feel shame, or they cause more damage, um, and it's fueled by yourself, right? So everyone has to be like, right, that's the big difference, is shame is fueled by you. It's your own internal. But then, we have conviction on the other end of that, right? So we have shame, conviction, or shame, conviction, however it looks better for the camera, whatever you like better. Uh, whatever it looks better for the audience. Um, so, right, now, when you walk in, when you walk in conviction, Right, you walk in repentance and honor, right? You turn away, like you, you feel conviction, you want to turn away from that thing because you recognize that it's wrong. You can walk with your head up and walk with redemption because you understand what, what Jesus has done for us, right? There's no shame. Uh, you still feel like, I know I did something wrong and I shouldn't have done it, and you want to walk away from it. But shame will not lead you to the right path of redemption and correction. Shame will just keep you down. And that's exactly where the enemy wants you, right? He wants us to feel down. He wants us to feel like in this place where there's no getting up. He wants us to keep us down. But conviction leads us to have honest and open conversations. It leads, it leads us to confession, to, to, to verbally confess as well as just internally confess. You can forgive yourself and be open to others and God's forgiveness. Shame closes you off to God's forgiveness. Conviction leads you open to it. Um, or sometimes you may need to actually receive someone else's forgiveness just as a, like a communal, you know, some people are like, I can't forgive myself, so I can't accept your forgiveness, I'm not going to do it, right? Shame does that. Shame leads you there. Conviction lets you address it and, and pay attention and accept that forgiveness so you can move, forgive yourself and truly take on God's forgiveness, right? Because you, um, I mean, God's forgiveness is always there to be clear, but like how you accept that and how you feel that and how you move forward in that. So, Conviction leads to restoration. Right? So there's, again, this big difference between how we look at shame and how we look at conviction. 
there are both these feelings when we've done something wrong, right? Like we've, we've done something wrong, we shouldn't have done it, but it's all about where is the fuel? Is it being fueled by you or is it being fueled by the Spirit? Is it leading towards destruction, depravity, or is it leading towards redemption and hope? Right, so again, conviction takes sin head on where shame kind of ignores it or kind of beats around it or doesn't really address it. Um, at least that's how it seems in my experience. Um, shame, uh, like I said, leads to erratic decisions where conviction will lead to decisions that are thought out and meaningful, right? You, you'll sit down with someone, you want to have that kind of it, you want to figure out how can I move forward from this, how can I move out of this direction? Um, and again, it's fueled by the Holy Spirit. Um, so again, I need to pay, I, I just need to stress that right. We're, the, the shame that we're talking about is specifically the shame of of someone being aware of when they've done something wrong. We're not talking about those other situations, right? Because had you heard what I just said and had a different idea of shame in your mind, you could you could be very misled and very like, wow, like that doesn't sound like Jesus at all. And you would be correct, like right. If I was saying that about like the shame a victim feels, right? That would be crazy. Right, so that's why I had to address right up front, like, remove that from your mind, because that's not what we're talking about today, right? That's a different issue. Um, so when we're talking about, again, shame, we're talking about uh, this idea of what someone feels when they've done something they know is wrong. Um, so the difference between shame and conviction, um, it's not always just the feeling, but it's also we need to actually listen to the conviction. Like, it's really important that we actually get that conviction and, and listen to it. Because um, ignoring your convictions is really no better than shame, right? Um, because if you just ignore your conviction, you feel it, and you're like, oh, right? Some people may not feel shame, they may not feel like, deprived, but they kind of feel that conviction, they know they've done something wrong, but they just kind of keep moving in that direction, right? They just keep walking away and getting further. Um, you know, I say it's just as bad, I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't have like, statistics on like people who feel shame versus people who just ignore their convictions like where that is right I'm just kind of throwing that out there um, but it's no better in the sense that we're not walking towards God then we're not we're not walking towards restoration is what I mean when I say that um, I'm not necessarily talking consequentially um, so the goal isn't just to not have shame and the goal isn't to just have conviction but the goal is to actually have that conviction and listen to it so there, think of a flame, okay, and your decisions, right, like, there's a fuel that you use to, to flame your decisions, or fuel, yeah, I think I'm, it'll make sense in a second, right, so you're fueling the flame of your decisions to burn sin is what I'm trying to get at, so if shame, if shame is how and what you try to fuel your decisions to burn sin, right, it either ends up not burnt at all, because it's either ignored or not dealt with, or not dealt with correctly. Like, right? Could you imagine creating a bonfire, and you're like, I'm just going to put some water on this, and then try to light it, right? It's like, that's not going to work, right? Think of shame as like that, in, like, that's not happening. Or it leads to an erratic fire and creates damage, right? Bad decisions out of emotional duress, right? Again, fueled by self. So think of someone like, all right, I'm going to create a bonfire, but they just start, like, pouring, like, gasoline, because, again, it's the how and the what, and they just start pouring it all over, like, everywhere, outside of the outside of the, the bonfire, and they start, like, oh, you know, it's going to lead it up from the house, and then they light that. That, that. that fire's going crazy, right? It's not burning, like, just in that, in that section. It's not burning all the good stuff, too. Um, and that's what shame does. So shame usually leads to us to, like, we can't even burn the sin, so to speak. Again, that's just like a, a metaphor. Um, or we start trying to burn it, but it's just erratic, and it starts burning other things. And maybe at the end of the day, it doesn't even fully burn what's there. It just starts wiping out some of the good, and you're like, what? Because again, you, you just make erratic decisions. You're not processing. But if we take that same concept, and we think about conviction, and it's, and it's how and what, because again, it's not just the what, it's not just the fuel, it's also the how, like what are you doing? Are you building, are you building a safe space? Are you containing it? You know, um, are you keeping the fuel inside where it should be? Um, so it's the how and what you try to fuel your decisions uh, with what to burn sin with. So it's calculated, it's controlled, it's contained, right? And that fire burns until the sin is ash, right? Essentially, it's no more, it's just it's not there. Um, and, then it, and then it goes out, right? So your decisions are thought out meaningful, so think of, 
whenever you look at somebody who's like, I know how to build a bonfire, and you watch them, and they somehow like just somehow keep it super contained. It's this big, beautiful fire, and you're like, I don't even know how you did that. You know, that's that's what conviction leads us to, right? It's this idea of it's a well-contained fire to remove that sin. Um, so let's look at scripture, right? I've, I've been talking a lot, but let's look at what scripture actually has to say. Um, so. In Luke 23, 24, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I know most of the context I'm talking about is when you do know, but I did mention sometimes the Spirit can convict you even when you don't. And I just think it's interesting, right? Like, Jesus, as he's on the cross, is saying, forgive them. If he can say that to the people who are crucifying him, beatily brooding him, making mocking him, making fun of him, um, and, and then obviously all that forgiveness he sends to ourselves, we should be able to forgive ourselves. We should be able to accept that forgiveness. So we don't want to have shame on ourselves if, if, if God himself isn't putting shame on us. Um, Romans 3, 22 to 26. Um, I know some people might want to pull up their Bibles. I can give you a second if you want to do that. But it's Romans 3, 22 to 26. Sorry, there's no PowerPoint. I'll just do this. Though. Should I just lift this up? So that's a really small PowerPoint. Just kidding. Okay. Um, the righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So Romans 3, 22, 26, when we look at that, it reminds us we're all sinners. Right? So there's no like, oh man, like I should feel so much shame. I should feel like such garbage because I did this this horrible thing. And I'm not saying there aren't some things that are worse than others in terms of like, you know, don't hear me wrong. I'm not trying to equate like, well, someone who steals gum to someone who murders someone. It's the same thing. I'm not saying that. Um, but my point is that we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. It's a reminder of that. And it's God through grace, right? He justifies all of us who has faith in, in Jesus, right? So we need to rely on the Spirit. We need to rely on God. We, we, we're not going to rely on ourselves to make ourselves feel better, and we don't want to live in that shame and condemnation because we're not going to move forward, and how could, we, how could we even, right, move forward and hear the Spirit if we're so stuck in our own shame, telling ourselves how much garbage we are, what, how, whatever we're saying to ourselves, right? I'm sure people are even you know, explicit language in their own minds towards themselves. Um, and that's not Jesus' heart. I'm not saying that Jesus loves the sin. I'm not saying any of that stuff. Um, but his heart is, he wants us to be restored. He wants us to be um, convicted. And he wants us to, to, with that feeling of conviction, to move forward towards restoration, to have accountability. First um, John 2, 1-2. says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for <coughs> sorry, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. When we look at 1 John 2, 1 through 2. It reinforces, right, that while we shouldn't sin, right, so there's clear, like, nothing I'm saying is saying, like, hey, sin freely and just be convicted and you're good. Like, I'm not saying that, right? But it reinforces that while we shouldn't sin, when we do, it's Jesus. Jesus who covers all of our sins. We don't do anything, right, to, like, make, like we can't, like, again, we still want to walk forward and move towards restoration, all of that. And it says we shouldn't sin, right? It, it, it's not saying sin freely, right? Have fun. Right? We know that's not the case. So the goal is always to walk towards God, to walk towards um, you know, what he would want us to do with our lives. But when you do sin, rather than having that shame, move forward in conviction, right? Move forward in restoration. 
It's Jesus who covers all of our sins. And if you're feeling shame, you're never going to be able to accept what Jesus has done for you. Because shame makes you feel isolated, hidden, away. You don't want to address like right. You you, just, you don't want to address it. You you, just, you're, you feel shame. Jesus, right? Everyone who believes in Jesus, right, and that includes every single one of you, um, right? Everybody who believes in Jesus, right, has that. Then we're going to look at Psalm 32, 3 through 5. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. <clears throat> Through my groaning all day long. Sorry about that weird. Let me restart because I had to cough. <coughs> Let's just get a good one out. <coughs> all right. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave me the guilt of my sin. When we look at that, at least for me, it tells us that confession is vital. Recognizing what we've done and confessing it to the Lord, confessing it, um, even to those brothers and sisters, I would say, maybe this verse doesn't necessarily speak to that, but I would say there's plenty of other places in Scripture we see that it's important to confess as well to our brothers and sisters um, because it's, we need to get that out, right? The enemy wants us to be hiding in that. He doesn't want it out in the open. He doesn't want accountability. He wants you to feel stuck and feel shamed and feel all that, but that's not what Jesus wants for us. He wants it out in the open. He wants it exposed. Um, I'm not saying, like, you're posting it publicly and telling the whole world. I'm not going to stand up here and be like, let me tell you all the things, right? That's not what I'm saying, um, right? You want to find those trustworthy uh, people um, that are in the body of, of Christ. But it reminds us that confession is vital to that pathway forward. We need to be able to confess, right? And that's, that's all part of conviction. Because shame will never lead to a confession. Shame leaves you again, hidden, in secret. You're not wanting to, to address it. Right? That's because you feel shame. That's what it is. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins as and to, clean, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, unri all unrighteousness. Again, you think someone who's feeling shame is going gonna, is gonna to feel that that's true and that's real? I've never met a person who felt shame and genuinely was like, yep, I'm going to go to God. Usually when people feel shame, they stop praying, they stop going to church. I mean, it's not necessarily all of these things, right? I'm just saying they do some of these things, right? So they, maybe they're still going to church, but they're, they're, not, they're not praying because they feel like, how can I even pray to God because I'm doing this thing? Or maybe they do stop going to church because they don't want to address it and face it because they're, they're feeling that shame. Um, you know, there could be so many different aspects, but I've never seen a positive result from someone feeling shame. Usually when someone feels convicted. Um, so you might say, okay, well, well, what if I'm already dealing with shame? Like, I don't know, like, that's just kind of how I naturally feel that I am. Um, here's the best I got for you. <clears throat> you know, I'm not all, you know, the best thing is, you know, cliche as it is, go to Jesus. Um, but I would say expose, expose the sin. Right? Talk with God about it. Right? Expose it. Get it out there. Get it out. Talk to God about it. Talk to those you trust about it. That is important. Right? Keeping it in the dark, again, will just continue to increase the shame. As you actually expose that and get it out, I've at least seen in my experience where it, move, it helps people move forward to healing, to whatever they need, to, to stop with that sin. So the more, the more shame you feel, and then the less likely you are to expose your sin. So it's a weird, vicious cycle. Right? So it's like, oh, I'm not going to say anything, but now I feel deeper in my shame. So now I'm even worse not going to say anything, and I'm going to just keep getting worse. So you just, sometimes you have to pull that band-aid off, but maybe you just start talking, talking with God. And, um, but it is important that we, we do find those people that we know and trust, that we can talk to about it. Um, we're not meant to be Lone Ranger Christians. Um, there's nothing really in Scripture that backs that up. So, um, 
You won't be able to convince me otherwise. Um, stay accountable, right? So again, you're letting someone you know and trust know about this thing. Someone who you know loves you. The biggest thing that's important is if you don't feel like that person is for you, it's going to be really hard for you to let them hold you accountable because you're just going to constantly feel like they're judging you or holding you down. But if you go into it with someone you know, this person loves me, they care about me, I trust them. I know that they want what's best for me. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, right? Have grace with them, they have grace with you in that conference because that's going to be tough sometimes. But let someone you trust hold you accountable. Be honest when you make a mistake. It doesn't help if you're like, hey, I want you to be my accountability partner, but you never actually tell them when you make a mistake. Well, it really defeats the point, right? It's like, yeah, I got accountability. It's like, do you really, though? Because if you're not telling them, <laughs> that's not, you know, that's not accountability. And allow them to be able to ask you, hey, how did you do today with that? It depends on what the say is. Maybe it's not a daily thing. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. But, you know, how are you doing with that? You know, um, whatever it is. So, choose someone who won't sugarcoat, but also someone who won't condemn you either, right? Um, right. So you don't want someone who's just going to constantly be like, it's okay, it's fine, Jesus forgives you, that's fine, just, it's okay. I know, I, like, I know people mean well when they do that, but it really doesn't lead towards restoration or anything in that situation. I'm not saying there isn't a time and place where you can say that, that is not what I'm saying. But if someone is always doing that, you are never moving forward, right? But if someone is always condemning you, well now you are going to feel like hopeless maybe or you don't want to talk to them so now you shut down, you're not accountable anymore. So you need to find someone who is not going to sugarcoat it um, but also be like, listen, like yeah, this, is, like, this isn't like what God wants, this isn't okay, but like God forgives you, loves you, I'm here for you, let's, let's, let's talk this through, let's work through it. Like you want someone who's going to kind of have that approach, that mindset. Um, and someone who's accessible, that's important. You could find that person, but if they're not accessible and you can't contact them, it's kind of pointless, right? It's like, oh, well, I speak to them every like six months. Well, that's probably not going to help you if you're dealing with an issue that's prevalent in, in, in there. So make sure you find someone that's accessible. Um, super important, stay accountable. <clears throat> um, focus on the cross and forgive yourself. That's important. Meditate on God's scripture about forgiveness. So remember, this this is this is all under the context of like, what if I'm dealing with shame? How do we kind of get out of that, right? So we talked about exposing the sin, staying accountable, focus on the cross and forgive yourself. Meditate on scripture about God's forgiveness, right? It's great if you're like, well, I'm reading through John right now. That's really important. Great. I'm not like I'm not against that. But if you right now need to understand and know God's forgiveness, maybe you need to focus on that to let that really set in and settle in your mind, settle in your heart to make it real to you. And read, you know, all the different verses, like, regularly. So that, you know, I'm not saying you have to read, like, all of them every day. Um, you're like, hey, I spent 23 hours reading the Bible, and I think I got an hour of sleep. Um, but, in all seriousness, right, read, meditate on that scripture. Don't just, like, read it, but actually just, like, process it and think about it. And, and let, that, let that sit and let that settle. Because if you're feeling shame, you need to be reminded of God's forgiveness. You need to know that he loves you. He, he is... God is for us, right? Um, it doesn't matter what you've done. He is for us. He wants us to turn to him for help. Um, so do it, um, right? Ask Jesus for help, right? So after you meditate on that scripture, right, you know, if you're still struggling, just ask him to make that real to you, right? Ask him to make, like, I'm, I'm reading this, but it just doesn't sometimes feel real. Ask him to make that real to you. Ask him to help you forgive yourself. Ask him for how you move forward. Ask him for help. Maybe even in that conversation, like, I'm struggling finding someone. God, give me someone to give me accountability. Give me someone who I can trust. Give me some, like help me out here, right? Um, and then, don't get in your own way. Uh, sometimes I feel like God answers the prayers, and we're like, nah. Like the, the, someone's like, look, there's a kind of, nah. You find an excuse like, I don't. That person's, I don't. I couldn't be accountable to them because of. And it's like some weird reason, and it's like, nah. It's like, you know how many times I've seen some of that happen, and it works out great? You know, it's like, my wife didn't want to marry me, and look at us. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of our story. Neither of us, you know, we, like, a beautiful, just as a reminder, like, God can do anything, right? We were both closed minded off to each other, and God brought us together, and had us work through some things of why we were either being superficial, or holding on to the past, or different things. 
and uh, it's, you know, been awesome. So, right, same thing with an accountability partner or someone like that in your life, right? You might be like, ah, oh, I'm going to find every excuse. Um, maybe you've only had certain experiences with them, but you never actually sat down and talked to them to see their heart, right? Um, some people could see me speak and only have a one version, potentially, of me, like not really know. Right, you could see me in other contexts and be like, oh, he's this way. And it's like, well, you're only seeing me in that context. You haven't talked to me. You haven't had a conversation. So um, so it's important that we do those things. Um, and then hopefully, and through all that, right, that's going to convert shame into conviction. Or, you know, maybe, you know, you can't really necessarily like convert water into gasoline. So maybe convert's not the best word, but, you know, it's the best I could think of, right? So to fuel your choices towards what God wants for your life, right? So maybe better said, you're going to switch out your fuel, you're going to switch out your process of starting that fire, right? So you're like, ah, uh, water? Nope. Here, let me grab the gasoline or whatever people use to start fires. Maybe that's not right. People are like, don't tell them gasoline. That's wrong, Vinny. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a fire expert. But, um, you know, and keep it contained, you know, don't be dumping around your house as you're trying to burn over here. Um, so, you know, Make that switch and make it, make it, um, you know, you got to be conscientious about it. Is that the right word? You got to be um, mindful, right? You got to think about it like, okay, I'm, I'm clearly feeling shame. I'm clearly feeling this. So, like, how do I move out of this, right? And find those ways to walk towards restoration and hope and conviction. So, there are some questions that I want you guys to think through and ask yourselves. First one is, am I currently walking in shame? If so, what steps am I going to take? You're someone who is, yes, you know what, I am walking in shame. Again, none of what we talked about was the, you know, if you're like a, a victim or if someone told you like, you bring shame to this family, none of it's like that. We're not talking about that. That's a totally different talk, totally different discussion. Um, but are you walking in shame? Like I've done something wrong and I feel like I'm in this dark hole alone and I'm not telling anybody or whatever. I've told the wrong people maybe um, and I'm not moving forward. I'm kind of just staying in it. Um, so if you're currently walking in that, um, what steps are you going to take? That's, that's what I want you to ask yourself. Um, also maybe ask yourself, what is my default? Is my default shame or conviction? Do I typically feel shame when I've done that or do I typically feel conviction? And maybe you need to explore the reasons why. You know, was it past church hurt? Maybe you had someone when you were growing up always kind of made you feel shame have this wrong idea, who knows? I don't know, you know? Um, you would know that. But maybe ask yourself, if, if it's shame, why? Why is that the case? Um, typically, it's, it typically results in either like a wrong view of God or a bad core experience or something. Um, but ask, you know, why, why is that happening? And some of it could just be an internal built-in, maybe personality type, but I, I do truly believe uh, that we can shift that, you know what I mean? So maybe it won't always be perfect, but we can shift so the majority is that feeling of conviction instead of feeling of shame. So we can more commonly walk towards hope and restoration um, than walking away to cry, you know, um, all that stuff, feeling hopeless. You know, and that's just through my experience when I watch people, you know, um, make these decisions. Um, tough one to ask yourself. Um, if we're being real sometimes, do I really believe God has forgiven me for all my sins? Right? Do you really believe that? Right? Um, I think we sometimes mix up this idea of like forgiveness with um, something being okay. Right? Um, I can forgive Melissa for doing something right that might frustrate me. It doesn't mean that I'm okay with that thing. Right? I can forgive that. Um, and, you know, it's like, oh, like, you, I, I'm going to use a stupid, like, small thing, but it's like, oh, you didn't, like, I don't know, fancy knives, you're not supposed to, like, throw in the dishwasher, or you're not supposed to leave them wet, you're supposed to, you know, it's like, you did that again, like, you got to dry it right away, right, I'm just using an example, like, right, that's not a big thing, I'm just using an example, it's like, right, doesn't mean that I'm going to, um, I'm like, yeah, that's fine, just keep destroying the knives, like, that's cool, right, but it's like, yeah, don't worry about it, and I, I use forgive, and you're like, that's a weird thing, like, you have to forgive her for that. Please don't like misconstrue what I'm trying to say. I'm just giving an example. Um, I'm just giving an example. That's just what popped in my head. That wasn't planned. Um, but so it's like, do you really believe God has forgiven you for all your sins? That is an important question to ask. Um, 
have you forgiven, have I, so if you're talking to yourself, have I forgiven myself for all my sins? Right, so do I actually believe God forgave me for all my sins? And then, have I forgiven myself for all my sins? Right, for those things. Um, and I really think that you can't do that second one without doing the first. I don't think you can forgive yourself if you don't believe God has forgiven you. I just don't see how that could be possible. Now, some, maybe some people it is, and whatever, that's just not my experience, but sure, so maybe you can flip those, doesn't matter, but the point is, both need to be true. Do I believe that God has forgiven my sins, and have I forgiven myself? Right? Forgiveness doesn't mean you're justifying it, you're saying it's okay. I think that's what people think sometimes, that's not, that's not the truth. Right? Um, it's not what forgiveness is. And then lastly is, who do I have for accountability, and do they challenge me? So, and if you don't have someone, you know, maybe look for someone, maybe start thinking and paying attention for that. But who do I have for accountability, and do they challenge me? Um, you know, if you have someone who, again, is your accountability person, and first off, you're not honest with them, that's a problem. But if they're not challenging you, that's also a problem. It doesn't really help you if they're just constantly like, it's okay, you told me, it's fine. That, that's not really the true heart of accountability, right? It's meant to move forward, right? Um, if I were to sit here and be like, this is a really big one. This didn't happen, so I need to make sure that's clear. Someone's going to like cut this on YouTube and be like, look what he said. Um, if I cheated on Melissa, right? Um, and I have accountability for it. I just keep doing it. Just, yeah, I'm just going to keep. Like, I'm not even telling the person. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm still doing it. Not telling me, you know, whatever. Like, that's not helpful. And if that person does know and I tell them, and they're just like, yeah, it's fine, man. Jesus forgives you. You're cool. Like, that's awesome. Not okay. Right? And that's a very extreme example. I get it. Um, but it's, it's meant to make a point. Um, so don't cut this up and be like, look what he said. Because um, I never, it was an example. Just joking. I know uh, even if someone did that, there's no way to, um, for me to protect it. So I said it itself. Um, again, it didn't actually happen. Um, but people love to cut and chop. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of just being funny. I'm just kind of doing it for laughs at this point. But um, it's good to laugh. Just like watching me fall. Go check my uh, social media. Um, so, yeah. So do I have accountability? Do they challenge me? Seriously, like, that's really important. Um, in my experience, community, right, our relationship with God is, is obviously, like, I think most people know that and understand that. And I think a lot of times people, like, they know community is important. Um, either sometimes they're not in the right community or they just find like, what makes them feel good versus what challenges them and, and kind of you know, like iron sharpens iron type deal where that friction is. Um, it's really important for a community like, to have that accountability, to have that um, people you can talk through things and work through things. So those are my questions to ask for yourself is am I currently walking in shame? If so, what steps am I going to take? Is my default shame or conviction? If so, why? Do I really believe God has forgiven me of all my sins? Have I forgiven myself of all my sins? And what do I have for accountability? Who do I have for accountability? And do they challenge me? Just letting you sit in a moment to maybe process some of that before. So one thing I want you guys to walk away with is that feeling that you get that you've done something wrong, that isn't the issue. But it's, is that feeling fueled by you and it's shameful and shame? Or is it fueled by the spirit of conviction? My heart and my prayer for everybody is that we move from shame, if, if that's even where you're at. Um, or maybe you know someone who, 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 who needed, needs to hear something like this. And you've been maybe having a hard time articulating the difference. Um, I don't know, but if that's you, the heart is that we all understand we move away from shame, we move towards conviction, we move towards restoration, because that's what God will want for our lives. Let's pray. God, I just want to thank you so much for who you are, for your heart, God, that you are for us. Um, that, God, while we do things that... Um, I come against who you are and what you've asked for us. 
that you, you forgave us, you died on the cross for us, you love us, there's hope. That's such a beautiful thing. And I just ask that truth that you do love us, that you do forgive us, is, is felt in our hearts and minds for each and every single one of us, that that helps us to move forward. Um, and that does not give us a license to sin, but God, that just gives us an um, inability to, to move away from the sin to confess our sin, to move forward. And just pray for um, anybody who may need um, accountability, that you bring accountability to them. Uh, pray for someone who just may need um, someone who's there to, um, maybe they don't even need accountability, they have that, but they just need someone who can help organize and, and move them in the right direction and, and what they can do. Um, God, could you use people in our lives I just pray that people know they're not lone rangers, that there's community there for them, that there's people here. I just pray that people feel your love, not only just through you, through when they spend time with you, but God, through the church, because that is so important, that in the church, people can feel your love and your hope and your joy, however that may look. And let us be a part of that. Let us be those people that bring people from shame toward conviction. I lift everything up according to your precious and holy name and according to your perfect will, Lord. Amen.